Yes, guys. Yes, people. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in. It's been a minute since we've done an episode of Carefree Reacts, but you know when the right opportunity comes, we're going to have to come and drop the reaction video. And it's been the perfect weekend for it. Chelsea win, Tottenham lose, United lose, Liverpool didn't win, um, Arsenal didn't win, City won, and we're not in a title race. I keep trying to tell people that. So, yeah, all in all, it's been a great weekend. It's been a brilliant weekend. And also, it's been a great weekend for our players. Cole Palmer's been bossing it. Um, Cole will, another good performance. I think Fafana was a lot better as well after the little worry about him potentially coming off injured. Um, Reese James bossed it at left back, crazy enough. But you guys know we're all here for one person, and we're here to talk about Nicholas Jackson because Nicholas Jackson has surpassed Kai Havertz's tally of 19 Premier League goals for Chelsea. Yes, in, in three seasons, this guy got us 19 league goals. And Jackson has surpassed this in 47 less games. So we are going to be reacting to the Jackson versus Havertz debate because this started bubbling a bit more over the last 24 hours on Football YouTube and also on the timeline because of stats like this. And it's also been going around for the majority of this season. Like You guys have been watching from the Back Again podcast, just as one example. It's a constant topic, not just there, but on most panel shows I see. The Jackson versus Havertz argument. I don't know why a YouTube short decided to pop up, but there we go. So yes, well, we're going to react to a couple of our, well, I say some are our favorite content creators, but we're going to be reacting to some takes based on the Havertz and Jackson debate. And you guys, feel free to react as well. Join in the in the comment section below. Let us know all your thoughts. Hit the like button. Subscribe. All of that crap. Enjoy the show. Don't be a Havertz. Be a Jackson. Hit the like button. So, first place we're going to start. You guys already know from the stream. I already kind of told you guys that I wanted to react to this. But we're going to react to everyone's favorite waffler, Johnny Minerals. Because he decided he was, he was not even just going to talk about it on stream. He was going to clip up that part of his stream and then put it out as another video because he really wanted to get his opinion. Why am I still sub to this guy? Get out of there, bro. But yeah, um, the point still stands. He wanted to clip it up and then put it out as another video. So let's react to it and let's hear the thoughts and opinions of Johnny Minerals. Everyone is propagandizing that. We've upgraded. We've upgraded on our Champions League winning team. Uh, someone explain to me, right? Kai Havertz is not a striker. He's a false nine at best, right? Nicholas Jackson's meant to be our actual striker because we didn't go and buy Ozzyman because they wouldn't pay 150, they wouldn't pay more than 150 grand a week offer to Ozzyman. Disgraceful. Yeah, that's why the deal fell through. John Obi McKay. I mean, it's our, it's our wage structure. I'm more annoyed that we just dragged it to deadline day, if anything, but like, just some waffle gets the point. Hell, stop waffling. Yeah. Victor Ozzyman's not happy with you, John Obi McKay. Yeah. All right. Oh, brother. So you're comparing two players that profiles are different. You're also comparing just the Premier League. Why don't you do all competitions? Oh, that's right. Jackson hasn't played in the Champions League. He hasn't played. So our argument is that Jackson hasn't played in the Champions League. That's the first argument. Great. Great start, guys. Great start, everyone. He did any knockout stages in the Champions League. <clears throat> Kai Havertz won us the Champions League with his goal. Mason Mount assisted. The winning the open places for Habits to win the Champions League. I have it. Uh, of course, we had to get the Mount dig in there first off. But seriously, I, I, you guys know how much I hate this argument, right? That one player single-handedly wins you a trophy. Unless it's like Lionel Messi bagging a hat trick or something like it. That's not the case. That's not the case. And I hate the the idea that some Chelsea fans use, where they just completely ignore the the Chelsea defence that conceded the least goals since 1994 for a UCL winning team. A team that was four minutes behind in the entire competition. Four minutes. But it was because of Kai Havertz with his one UCL knockout round goal <laughs> is the reason why we won the UCL. Edison's touch was probably the most vital thing in that movement as well because like Havertz's touch was taking it out for a goal kick if we really want to be honest. But Seriously, that this whole narrative only oh, won us the Champions League. No, he didn't. The whole team won the Champions League. You can say he played a part. Fine. I ain't got no problem with that. He was actually really good in the final, to be honest. One of his rare good games. But this is ridiculous. 
Kuyvert scored the winning penalty to win the Club World Cup. Kuyvert gave the assist to equalise in the Super Cup to take us to penalties and scored his penalties. I, don't... I swear he missed his penalty in the Super Cup final. Let me know if I'm wrong in the chat, but I swear he missed that. I don't care about GA. I don't care about data. I don't care about XG. Probably because it doesn't suit your narrative, but Faz. You cannot compare Nicholas Jackson to Kai Havertz. I don't give a shit what the data tells me. I don't. But but well, then why are you doing it, bruv? Why are you doing it? I care what the transfer market tells me. This is Clown Lake mentality. What I care about is what Roman Abarant's mentality tells me and what Kai Havertz has delivered. And he's delivered trophies and elite prestigious trophies for Chelsea. And never forget. How has he delivered it? If it's him, then why does this guy keep crying over Thomas Tuchel being sacked? Because then it wasn't Tuchel that won us the Champions League. It was Kai Havertz. This is ridiculous. The whole narrative is just trophies. And this is my thing. Trophy argument. Like I get it. Trophies talk. I always say that. But it doesn't run like that. It doesn't mean that just because he was part of the team, that means he's much better three years after the fact that we won the UCL than Nicholas Jackson right now. Like we want to praise him for getting us to, to the Champions League and winning the trophy, even though, again, it was the defence and the midfield, if anything, and the goalkeeper. The attack was just carried there. Bar Mount, I'll give Mount, he had a very good run in that tournament. But the point still stands. If we want to do that, then why don't we hold Havertz accountable for being our starting striker when we went from third to 12th? How about that? Oh, it doesn't suit the narrative because it was everybody else's fault except Kai Havertz. Not the one who was missing chances for fun, couldn't win a duel to save his life. I was also offside, I think, the second most amount of times in the Prem that season. But we move. For one fucking second, that these clowns sold Havertz to not only a direct rival in Arsenal who are competing with City to strengthen them at the age of 23 years old, where he hasn't even hit his peak yet, all right? Okay, so now we're annoyed that we sold him to Arsenal. Well, the, just just before we come back to this video, can can we just recognize the point that Habits chose to go to Arsenal? He literally picked them over Bayern Munich. He literally picked them over Bayern Munich. Like uh, we want to act like, oh, we forced him out there. No, he he gladly chose to go there. And to be honest, they gave him a pay rise as well. God knows why they did it. Like he was literally the starting striker for a team that finished twelfth. And again, they've gone from second to second since. But their problem, I see why he took it. To be honest, it's a good payday. It's probably the best amount of money he's ever gonna get. So, yeah. So don't be annoyed that we sold him. He chose to leave. He gladly wanted to go. We could have sold him to Bayern and it would have been fine. Because they went half his wages in January and get him signed a contract extension. They already started their, their nonsense. If that's even true, then I'm glad because he didn't deserve 150k a week. He can get that half or leave. That's fine. It's then we're carrying this Stanley Stewart little walking through the door, a little twiddle dee, twiddle dum. All right. But they also use that money to go and buy Strasbourg, which they have, have destroyed. The, the culture, the, taking all the experience out. And the ultras, they all know. They all know, the, the, the ultra boy 90s, that their club's not at an elite like, level at Chelsea. They haven't won anything, but they know their level, but they know that the, the culture... Uh, yeah, I'm sure you know the ins and outs of Strasbourg, sure. Culture ...and the environment at their club has been destroyed. And who's spearheading that? Who's beachheading, streamlining, bashing up, looking at young girls? Siri... <laughs> what the fuck is he on about? Oh, my God. That's Nick Barley. You know what I'm saying? What are we doing here, bro? They've also, they've also made Enzo Fernandez captain outright clipped in fucking 10k out being, being racist. Everyone is supporting him still. Every I, I mean, you know what? I'll give him that. He ain't wrong with that. Broken clocks right twice a day and all that. I mean, fair enough. Everyone's defending this guy. The guy got dropped against the Dippers. Yeah, and that's the only thing I can sort of applaud Enzo Mresca for, apart from a you know a nice little winning run. Great, well done. But when you come with, get up against the real test, when you've had a bit of form, you failed. And you're fucking okay, hell, the guy's just ridiculously negative. Like, what do you mean the only good thing he's done is drop Enzo? You if you can't like I'll be real, I get it. we didn't beat Liverpool, we didn't beat Man City. I actually don't want to overhype those performances like that because yeah, we lost. Ultimately, we lost those games. But if you're going to tell me that you don't see an improvement in the style of play, you don't see an improvement in the mentality, the squad depth, the attacking options, 
the midfield. And I was going to say the defense, but it's been a little bit iffy still. But if you can't see those sorts of improvements, then you're either lying to yourself, you're blind, or you're just deluded, or you're just a mix of all three. Or praising. This gapper is saying, I don't mind, you know, I'm ups- I'm not happy that we lost, but I'm very happy with the, with the performance. This is not mentality. This is not Chelsea mentality. Don't compare Kai Havertz and Jackson. It's like chalk and cheese. It's like mixing oil and water, yeah? And the oil, so have it right, is German oil for a German whip, yeah? I don't know what he's talking about, but whatever. The water that we got with Jackson is sewage water because he ain't delivered nothing, yeah? He's just doing... Michael Jackson impersonations and ow moonwalking and giving it. I don't understand how you can talk down on one of your players like this, especially one of the better performing players. Like if it was someone who's been underperforming for a long period of time, I kind of get it because you start losing that attachment to them. But for a player who's actually considerably improving uh, week in and week out, it's starting to become more clinical. Um, our starting striker who's done really well for us and we're talking him down and mocking his celebrations all in support of a rival player who literally said that winning a UCL with Arsenal would mean more. The man literally said that. And here we are trying to take down one of our own players and mock them all in support for a guy who, who left us in 12th to go and join a rival for extra money. Are, are you serious? Like then he talks about how he hasn't delivered any anything, which just comes down to the original point from the start. He thinks individuals should get the praise over the entire team for winning a trophy. So you give Havertz the single-handed uh, praise for winning the UCL. You ignore the defense, and then with Jackson, you blame him for us not winning any trophies when you don't look at the other problems instead but you will for all other situations because you're happy to crash it on Clear Lake for anything else. But then you want to look at Nicholas Jackson and say, oh, he hasn't delivered yet. Or to cook him to to prop one of our rival players. Some Chelsea fans are ridiculous. The man literally likened Nicholas Jackson to sewage water to compare him to an Arsenal player. The same man who's doing up I back my players, uh, unlike these agenda merchants when it was the whole mountain habit situation, but clearly doesn't show the same energy once they've left. Why? Stands. Player stands are absolutely ridiculous. He can say he isn't one. No, he's, he is one, bro. All That's is. And pulling the shirt. Shit. Funny, he pulls the shirt and there's no shirt sponsor. It's just trust the cum shot. That's all it is. Trust the cum shot. I need about 20 chances, bro, to score a few goals. Trust. Trust the come shot is crazy, but also have it stand complaining that a player needs a couple of chances to score a goal is ridiculous. It's crazy. Um, we're missing after West Ham. Good goal, don't get me wrong, but not enough. Not enough. Then Dick dealt with him. North. Van Dick dealt with him. Okay, cool. I wonder what he did with Havertz too. I, I, whatever, man. We already know what we're getting with Johnny Minerals anyway, so I'm not even too surprised by that. Let's go to the next video. Because I was listening to El Alwa earlier, um, well, last night, and I saw a Jackson Habits debate pop up out of nowhere as well. So let's do a little reaction to that as well. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in here. Keep hitting the likes, keep subscribing. Actually, sub to my guy, Hassam. Sub to Hassam. I'm sure most of you guys have done so already. If not, he's not doing the whole Chelsea rattling thing anymore. So go give him a sub. Go give him a sub. That's my guy. But let's get into this video, guys. Yeah, Jackson, Jackson is a is a better player than Kai Havertz. He is. Mo, Mo, Mo just wants to... Rostov, shout out to Ahmed. My guy. Do it, but the reality is like, Jackson's got more to his game than Kai Havertz. What he's does got more he have to more to his game? What? what, what he's more better. Than... Like yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does so... he have... Yeah. When it comes to link up play, when it when it comes to link up play, both players have that. But what Nicholas Jackson also has yet is he's got pace as well to threat plays. He's got more weapons to his game. So Kai Havertz, he's not the quickest. He's a good footballer. Yeah, he can do the, he can do the you know giving it to the wingers, giving it to these players. But with Jackson, he's got more. I hear that. He might not be the best finisher, but there's just more aspect. He, he carries okay, the ball then, better. Than... But then, but then I can say I can say that he's got strength over Jackson. I can say that. He... I could actually hear that he's got strength because he has improved that, but. I mean, if I compare it to Jackson, I think he lacks the aggression that Jackson has. And also don't think he can use his body the same way Jackson does. Like Jackson's a lot more smarter in terms of those aspects of the game. I think Havertz has just genuinely just got a bit stronger 
and that's about it. So you could make the argument. I still think Jackson at least matches him on that. But I mean, eh, whatever. It's not the worst one I've heard. Kyle Hubbard is not strong. He's able, he's Kyle Hubbard's not strong, able, by the way. He's just he's tall. Able to, he's able to hold players off better than Jackson. I just said he's just tall. Fairs. He's not even giving him that. <laughs> I have a strong player, though. I can say that. So, so no, but I just told you, clear. Nicholas Jackson has You're more right. weapons. Nicholas Jackson has more weapons to his game and he's more dangerous to def- to, to the opposition defence. Whereas with Kai Havertz, yeah, I hear that. Like I've, I think you said earlier as well that he could actually be um, hold players off better. No, Jackson is much better at that. You literally saw it in the Newcastle game. We've seen it in periods in the Liverpool game as well. I even remember in the Carabao Cup final in Liverpool at home, he was doing the same thing. When he's in transition. His ability to hold players off while he's running at full speed is ridiculous. It's it's nuts. I I never see Havertz do that, at least not successfully. Remember his time at Chelsea, he wouldn't win a duel to save his life. So, no, Jackson could hold off players much better than Havertz. I'll say that. Completely disagree. Okay, so what does what does Kai Havertz possess like over Nicholas Jackson? Like, we can go This is the this is a good question. For it because both Kai, compa- Havertz, Kai Havertz Kai Havertz has Finishing, Kai Havertz has a uh, link up. Kai Havertz- Finishing is crazy, by the way. Like, if it's not a header or maybe like a one touch finish, no. And even then, he misses it half the time. You let this guy have an opportunity to think it's over. Even Nicholas Jackson is getting more clinical now. Jackson's actually scoring 1v1s more consistently now. No, finishing is ridiculous. We are not hearing that. Havertz can. can- Nicholas Jackson has link up as well. Kai Havertz can score a header. He can score a header. Yes, guys. <laughs> Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz. Jackson, Havertz, is, Havertz, Jackson, Havertz is, Jackson is arguably as good as a footballer than Kai Havertz, maybe if not better. And he's also a better goal scorer I, than him. Jackson's a way better. Max, he is a better goal scorer. I think, footballer. I think Kai Havertz... I have, his goal scoring record is better than it. So what I think Kai Havertz is a, is a, is a better uh, striker than him. And but a striker that's with less goals. <laughs> that's crazy from Ziad, first off. Uh, better striker, like, I feel like he's literally just using words now because he hasn't really got much of an argument in this. Subhanallah. It was less goals, better striker with less goals. Subhanallah, yeah, <laughs> best striker with less goals. So, this is this is the thing. So, it's so Chris Wood better than Nicholas Jackson, Ziad. Yeah, we're not talking about only this season, last season as well. Who we finished with more goals? Actually, in the last 22 games, Havertz has 21 GA. Yeah, okay, well, well, 22, well, like, Man said goals and Hassan says GNA. Shameless, brother. I could only expect it from you, bro. Big up to Hassan, though. Uh, last season, who had more, more goals? Jackson. Who had more goals last season? Jackson. Yeah, but Havertz played half the season midfielder. That's not my but, but We're also not realising that this is Kai Havertz's fifth but season in the exactly, Premier League as well. Exactly. Though you're saying that's not your problem. But that's the facts, though. But, well, yeah, to be fair, like you gotta give him that. He did play midfield half the season, but that doesn't make him a better forward. That just means like Arteta and the Arsenal fans were waffling for half the season when they're like, "Oh, you Chelsea fans were just playing him out of position, and that's why he wasn't so good for them and all of that." No, no, man's a striker. He's just not really a good striker. That's it. it is what it is. You man spent sixty million on someone you're gonna have to replace. Hold that. Hold that. The fact is, the fact is, when he played at striker, he's he's got a better goal to game ratio than than uh, Nicholas Jackson. But anyway, but this is regard- we're talking about as if Kai Havertz is but, fresh to the league. I actually don't think that's true. I actually don't. Think, I have to double check. But I don't think that's true. Bro, he's not fresh to the league. The guy. He's- been here. How many seasons has he been here? I think it's on. That's also a great point by Ahmed because Havertz has been here for about five seasons and this is Jackson's second season. And in my opinion, he already looks better than Havertz. So imagine what he could be like in a year or two's time. Havertz has done nothing but stagnate. Like, that. There's what has he shown in the last two years that's any different from his time at Chelsea other than just bulking up a little bit? Genuinely nothing. These men just bought him unwarranted. And now every summer they come out asking for a striker. These men were begging for Oshimen, Jokeres, Sesko, all these men. And who would be sitting on the bench if they got a striker? Then when you when you bench him, you have to sell him because he's your highest earner. Ultimately, waste of money unless he literally takes you to a league title or a Champions League or plays a key part. That's the better term. Plays a key part. 
Four, five, nine, five, nine. So five, five minutes seasons. Is lockdown, bro. So five five seasons. Is lockdown, bro. Okay, five seasons, and his best goal tally is thirteen. Wallahi, have shame, have shame. That is ridiculous. And that might be the tally at that Arsenal too. If that's what these men have been flexing, a 13 goal season, this is disgusting. I don't even like stats, but have shame. Come on now. He's a okay. he's decent. He's decent. He's doing his job. Big up to Ahmed, by the way, for just ignoring the copium because all this is is Arsenal fans just begging to get their get back on Chelsea for years of failed transfers. They got Gallas and he flopped. They got Czech and they got like one good season out of him and then he's respectfully started the decline. They got David Luiz when he was over the hill with us. They got William, which was just one of the funniest periods I've ever had watching football when William was doing up lockdown and his zero out of 10 performances. This is meant to be their get back. Really and truly, Jorginho is. Jorginho was brought in as debt for you and he's not been too bad. 12 million decent transfer. Havertz, you saved this club. I fear of an alternate timeline where we actually re-signed him. Like, God forbid. We would, would It would have been 12th again last season. Imagine Havertz, Gallagher, Pochettino and Chilwell in the same squad. Bruv. It would be a mess. So yeah, in the words of Giroud as well, thank you, Arsenal. You did save us a little bit there still. God, well, he's nothing exceptional. Ahmed, Ahmed you're, you're speaking like this, but you yourself said and this is these are words that came out of your mouth yeah that a player at some point if they got a shitty manager managing they can them improve of course they they no 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 if they got a shitty manager managing them then a player can only do so much before you have to start blaming the manager for doing stuff playing them in different positions what? constant changes constant different leadership what happened at Chelsea bro I don't count what happened with habits at Chelsea I don't I don't oh my god God, oh my goodness, waffle and copium and waffle and copium. Shout out to sad, but this is very sad because, first off, the nerve of pretending that Tuchel is a bad manager is ridiculous. That that is that is so nuts. Like this man was literally the best coach in the world in 2021. Bundy Award, he was the best with or without that crap. And and Potter, he, Potter weren't even that terrible, to be honest. I, I do regret ever being Potter out. I've said that numerous times because that squad was, was pitiful. Man was doomed to fail from the start. But also, I just said I don't count his time from Chelsea. The, the three years at Chelsea didn't happen. The three years at Chelsea didn't count. I choose to ignore it. Blindly ignoring something because it don't suit your narrative is the most arsenal thing in existence. I'm not even surprised by that. I choose to ignore it, guys. <laughs> count that as an experience. I don't count that as an experience because that is... In, in, at Chelsea... Okay, wow. I, I love that you could just say, what are you, CL? That's it. It did so many Arsenal arguments. It's brilliant. It was, it was, it was that's, shit. That's, uh, that's kind of he the biggest was, thing in a football player in history to win the Champions yeah, League. I don't care about what they wouldn't won understand. Champions League or whatever. They wouldn't understand, of course. I'm talking about performances and him being played as a player. He, the numbers were shit because he was being moved around from position to position to position well, under different true. leadership. That's under different true. leadership. That, that, that's BS. He literally spent like 18 months as our starting number nine. And by the way, in that time period, he went from third in the league to 12th. So make of that what you will. As soon as he's coming... for a long time. Ahmed, who's better? Havertz or Xerxes? Someone ask for the chat. Can I just land my phone? Yeah, Xerxes is better. Go inside, go inside, go inside. Ooh, I don't know, you know. It's like Xerxes at United and Ten Hag tax is peak. I, I, need to, I need a couple months before I answer that one. I need a couple months. Poor Xerxes, bro. Maybe I'd already be saying he's clear if he was just in a better team, but who knows? Oh, sad. sad, sad. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I'm talking about overall. Havertz, it's just that simple. As soon as Havertz came into the Arsenal um, into the Arsenal system and played in striker, he's improved massively. He has I, think he, I think he's better than Nick. You could barely even say what he improved. We got like finishing and heading and all of this, and like it hasn't improved. It is not really improved like that. The man's still missing hella chances for fun. It's ridiculous. But okay, Jackson. But 
listen, there's nothing wrong with sorry, being, sorry, being, okay, being, okay, being better than no. Nicholas Jackson. You guys don't need to get insecure about it. He he is a good. We're talking about. I mean, first like good bit of gaslighting. Brody insecurity card. I rate it. Insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. They speak, something. They sound like they're insecure. Let, let me tell you something. I, 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 I criticize Jackson a lot. Before, it's has the same GA, non penalties, GA as Haaland. So we're talking about somebody who has the same non penalty okay. GA as Haaland. First off, Haaland missed like a month in January. And I think he also missed a couple games in April. But even with that, like comparing Havertz to Haaland is ridiculously shameless. I low key rate the shamelessness, but still, come on, man. In 2024, okay. you guys are getting upset because I'm saying he's better. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Who's going to end the season? And half the goals? season he played midfield. This is true. Yeah, okay, so exactly. Hassan, with your stupid excuses, who's going to end the season with more goals? <laughs> this season? <laughs> Ziad's hilarious, bro. With your stupid excuses, who's going to end the season with more goals? <laughs> this Ooh, season? He's on the spot. No, last I think season. I, have a, I think I. <laughs> what, last season? This season, yeah. Yes, this season. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. He don't want to say Jackson, bro. He don't want to say. I'm, I was about to say, I don't know, man. It was just a direct this, question. Bro? Martin White's all over Havertz. They can't answer a simple question. Who's going to end the I season with more goals? I just the question, bro. I said Havertz. No, top left, the fraud. I, I don't know. It, it, could be, it could be close, but I think Havertz has a chance to, to surpass him. Okay, they good. have a chance. Of that, was, that was said with no conviction. The pause, the stutter. <laughs> he don't believe that. <laughs> he don't believe that. Of course they have a chance, but they give me a name. I'll probably say Havertz gets more goals. Zero confidence. Zero chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so sad. <laughs> Yo, Ziyad's just stuck it on him, bro. That's hilarious. But it's also true, to be honest. Man said that with zero conviction. I don't believe he believes that. Zero confidence. Zero chest. <laughs> it's fine. GA. So, so sad, you see what just happened? We answered this question and then he's like zero confidence. Listen, I answer no, the I, I, you answered the question after me asking 15 times. Really yeah, you know the difference, the difference between me and you is I actually think before I speak. So no, you, I didn't think. you had confidence before, so don't, listen, don't think now. Sad. sad, you know when you said about like, oh, uh, you said it's all about the manager. I'm talking about with <laughs> and how good a player is. Like with Kai Havertz, obviously under Arsenal, he's he's improved as a player than he did with Chelsea. That's fact. That's true. Yeah. I only give. I think he's got space um, in terms of strength. That's genuinely it. Other than that, I think he's the same player that left. Excuses for players that have that possess like real, real, real quality. With Havertz, it's just good. Do you get it? Does that make sense? Like I, I, he's a I good think... player playing and he's doing his thing in it. But with Jackson and Kai Havertz, like it's it's not really. What about Saka? What about Saka? Ahmed. What about Saka? He was fantastic well, today. You cannot fucking just... Game? Are you going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Now they're trying to pull the Saka prop out of him. And to be fair, he bossed it. He absolutely cooked Robertson. But Arsenal fans need to get to a realisation they ain't winning nothing until they get a proper striker. And in terms of this Havertz and Jackson debate, Jackson has come in and literally overshadowed his entire time at Chelsea in 47 less league games. There is your answer. Man, I want to talk to me about all you want as the Champions League and everything. Man had one knockout goal. Get in the bin. Get in the bin. This man is one of the worst strikers I've ever seen play at this football club. He's gone to Arsenal and taken them from second to second. And I promise you, if they don't win no major trophy, it's going to be his position that they go and look to upgrade on. Then when that happens, they're going to get rid of him because he's their highest earner and he can't be warming the bench. So, big season ahead. But for now, Jackson is dunking on him. So, big up to everybody that's locked in. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Up the Chels. And yeah, if you're an Arsenal fan, cry more. Big up everybody. Big up everybody. Up the Chels.